Nordvik Golf Club is part of the great triumvirate of Lynx courses that occupy this northwesterly stretch of the coastland in Holland, between Amsterdam and Den Haag. You could be forgiven for thinking that this is a young club when compared with its esteemed neighbours in Royal Hague and Kenema, but golf has been played on this stretch of sand-blown dunescape since 1915. And although a housing estate now occupies the site of the original layout which consisted of work by Harold Hilton and Harry Colt, the club moved to its current site just north of the town in 1972. To understand the future of Nordvik, one must first understand what happened 50 years previous when the club was left without the land or holes on which to play golf. The course was the product of a group of members, most notably Paul de Jong. Designs were put together, land was acquired and approval was secured from the local council and the club forged ahead with construction, aided by the Anglo-Dutch architect Frank Penning, who helped with finessing the links and fashioning the sharp and severe contours we see today. A vast expanse of exposed sand and a roller coaster of dunes stretches as far as the eye can see. This is no familiar landscape. This is something from fantasy. A sea ridge stretches out and away from the modest beach style clubhouse protecting the course from the North Sea. And as your eye leads you inland, where course stretches into the distance, you catch a glimpse of the pine forest, where you disappear into a different style of course altogether. The reason why comparisons between Nordvik and Formby are frequently drawn. For a post-war design course, and certainly the newest Lynx course in the Netherlands, there are some familiar qualities. It can stretch well beyond 7,000 yards, it can test the elite player, and is more immune to advances in modern equipment, protecting its relevance as a championship venue. Indeed, the Dutch Open has been held here on nine occasions, with Bernhard Langer, Colin Montgomery and Severiano Ballesteros all having won the coveted title amidst these crashing dunes. The sharp and severe contours left by Pennick in the sculpting of the course, especially the dramatic runoffs around the greens, would look almost out of place in most landscapes. However, here they only serve to match the severity of the land itself. The result is that this is a course from the more penal school of architecture. It rewards strong ball striking and you must be able to contend with the elements. Amongst the many memorable holes, the 11th perhaps best encapsulates Nordvik, a par 5 that meanders from a high dune across a snaking fairway leading up to the high point of the course, picture perfect. The undulations within the land will repel your ball away unless a committed stroke is played to the correct areas. Nordvik perfectly uses the crashing land within the holes. You rarely play through the natural channels. Instead, you play across, over and around them in a relentless cocktail of extreme dunes, fast turf and an elevation change, coupled with a wild weather system off the North Sea. Much like the generations of members before them more than 50 years ago, the course is once again benefiting from the tireless efforts of its members to improve it further and with the help of Martin Ebert are embarking on an ambitious plan that will not only elevate the course even further but also maximise the potential of the land itself. Well I think one of the most amazing Lynx landscapes that I've come across it reminds me very much of the old Great British Isles Lynx you know when you think of all that exposed sand around the place um, it's still evident at Nordvik, whereas so many of our Lynx courses, it's all sort of grown over. Um, and I don't know whether it's just the lack of organic matter there or just the, the exposure on the sort of southerly facing slopes, but it just reminds me of, of some of those scenes from our great old courses. So, yeah, I think the potential's there um, if we can be allowed to do things. If we can get through all of the, you know, the permission side of things and just concentrate on the pure characteristics of the detailed design, then... 
I think um, you know the yeah, it couldn't be as good as anything really. I've been a member now for almost 30 years. I was living in Rotterdam at the time. I was a member of a club down there. And so I got a chance to become a member at Nordweg. But I remember the first time I visited the property, you you turn off a road, you go through a forest and thinking, where am I going to? I'm along, along the coast, I'm driving through this forest and then it opens up and as you drive to the clubhouse, you see this incredible terrain and a great golf course is sitting there. And so it was the, that was the first yeah, a little mini wow moment as you drive up and you get to the club. Then I've played so many times that course, of course, and every time it's different. I mean, I walk off with a smile even if I get beaten to death by the course that day. The North Dakota sits on, uh, it sits in our dune system. And so the dune system is a sand-based environment, windswept sand-based environment, and our sand drains wonderfully. So from an architectural point of view, and also from an agronomic point of view or perspective, it's it's the greatest place to have a golf course. And they're, they're called dynamic dune system. And dynamic means that what you saw, the sand blown areas are natural sand blown areas and they move. So in 10 years time, that sand blown area will be gone and have, will have moved a few meters um, down the wind. The Netherlands has strict laws governing any development of the landscape or the use of artificial chemicals, ensuring flora and fauna thrive alongside our beloved game. Many clubs would see this as an obstacle. However, Martin and the club have an altogether different outlook. It's become quite clear we're in a nature preserve, uh, the course and the nature, that changes we want to make to our course, uh, we could also improve our nature area. Small example, we've got four or five holes uh, inside our uh, tree-lined areas, forest areas. Those trees are not indigenous to our area, so we need to move them and change them and thereby can improve the nature to dune grass landscape. The way we do that is that we do that in a sort of partnership, co-creation with the nature organizations and the ecological specialists who are very enthusiastic about the improvement potential of our nature while we're improving our course. And so that combination is creating a lot of interest and, uh, yeah, motivation. The course at Norvite was built on the foundations of a passionate and hard-working membership who wanted to see their club progress to its next chapter. And in the same vein, Martin and the team at Norvike, under the stewardship of Martin Ebert, hope to do the same again 50 years later. The land at Norvike is like nothing else. Its members are passionate and resolute, and the future of this club is once again filled with optimism.